Hello everybody and welcome to listen to this tutorial uh, webinar. In this uh, session we will see through how you can put together different data, so the patient's CBCT and uh, map that with the intraoral scan for example and a crown design. So how you can map any STL files on top of a CBCT volume. So first of all, uh, we have here in the Romexis 3D module, we have the CBCT available. We also see here below uh, the intraoral scan and uh, we even have made a prosthetic design already so that we can use it in the implant planning, for example. So let's start by opening the CBCT and uh, it will be on top of this that we will then now map with this uh, fit model tool that we find here on the upper toolbar. So we will fit the intraoral scan on top of this volume. So we go from select and we see all the patient's STL files and we can select the intraoral scan. If you wouldn't have the intraoral scan uh, yet in, uh, in the patient's files, uh, from browse you can browse the files from the computer from any folder. So the idea with this fit model tool is that we need to select three points uh, at minimum, uh, three points in common from both of these images. So uh, a few tips uh, so that the mass match would be the best. So uh, the best thing is that always when you are looking for a common point, uh, please uh, rotate the models uh, so that you are looking them from the exact same angle like I have done now here. So for example, if I want to select a, the first point from here, so it's good that I have the CBCT from, uh, looking from the same position, so it will be more probable that I select the exact same points from both images. So we start always selecting the first point from the left side image. Uh, we select the point with uh, right click, mouse right click, and then we select the exact same point uh, from the CBCT image. Uh, then we can move the volumes and look where would we want to place the second uh, point. Uh, so for example here. And uh, also when selecting the points it is very important that we select the points uh, far away from each other. So the further away the points are the more probable it is that our match will be good. So that's why uh, I try to select the points as far away as I can. But uh, there's of course one limitation that you may have. Uh, if there are a lot of artifacts, uh, for example, on the, on the posterior area, so you want to avoid the artifacts. So you don't want to select po the points anywhere where there are, there are a lot of artifacts. Uh, so then you might need to uh, select the points only from the anterior area. But in this case, we don't have too much artifacts here, neither on the molar area, so we can uh, well uh, select the third point uh, from the molar here. And uh, also one important thing when selecting the three points, apart from having them far away from each other, is also how they are positioned. So you can see here the three points now, they form uh, a triangle. They are not in a straight line. So that is also good to uh, remember that uh, the match, the three-dimensional match that we are doing will be better uh, if the points are uh, in a triangle shape. So it gives the three-dimensional information for Romexis to uh, fit the models together. Let's say if uh, I would have selected this green point instead of putting it here, I would have put it on the lingual side. Then my match probably would have been worse because the lines, uh, the dots, the three dots would be more in line. They wouldn't form such a good triangle. So that is also something that uh, you can take into account when selecting the points. And uh, the points always, the best is that if you can select them from the cusps. So generally uh, we recommend uh, taking the CBCT images with the jaw open so we could see well the uh, cusps. But as you can see this image uh, has been made with the jaw closed. So we can still find quite good points uh, 
on both images that are uh, easily detectable. So once I have given three points, uh, you can check that here the uh, three points that it shows in green. That means that uh, Romex has already checked that the points should be uh, more or less good, that you haven't put the points in a different tooth on one image on a, and on another tooth on the other image. So then you just can click done and this is when uh, Romexis will start the fine tuning. So now Romexis will use a special algorithm to calculate the best match. Uh, Romexis will, after calculation, show us a deviation map. And this deviation map means that it will show us uh, in color how good is the match. Uh, green means very good, uh, red means bad and yellow means uh, almost good. So if uh, the match is very good, uh, the crowns should be green and the gingiva red. And why is that? Well, because the crowns are the uh, part of the images that are visible on both images. The intraoral scan and the CBCT, they both show the crowns. But the uh, soft tissue that we see in uh, intraoral scan, that is not visible on the CBCT. And that's why uh, it is shown in red, because uh, we cannot find the similar surface from both images. So uh, any uh, objects that there are uh, should be uh, visible on both images, should be in green, and then uh, if there are some that are not visible on both images, they should be red. And now my match looks quite good. Uh, we still notice that there are some red spots there, but that is actually totally normal because, uh, first of all, the CBCT is never as exact uh, as an intraoral scan because there might be distortions on the shape. And uh, as well, now that we have the jaw closed, so that might also give some distortion to here to the cusps of the uh, anterior teeth. But what, what is important to check is that overall the color of the crowns is green. Let's say if I would have here, if the molar would be red, that would mean that my model is tilted towards the anterior, for example. So then, of course, I should check uh, my three points. But if I'm happy with the three points, then I can just select Use Automatic Match. And uh, But before I click that, I, I also want to mention that uh, normally speaking, uh, giving three points is well enough for the matching. Uh, it's uh, only maybe in uh, fully edentulous cases uh, that we might need to give more points to find the uh, right positions or in cases where we might have a lot of artifacts. Uh, but I always recommend you to try first with the three points and, uh, and normally also you don't need to adjust the threshold here for the CBCT. So just try with the three points and uh, please make sure you have the fine-tune match uh, checked and then the automatic match uh, normally should come quite good. So I select use automatic match and that's when uh, Romexis then shows me back to this view where we see the intraoral scan map to the CBCT. And after this uh, you can check the position still of course for example from the slices so you can scroll the slices and check that it follows nicely the crowns and we see that it follows very nicely. So we are happy with the match. Uh, if we wouldn't be happy with the match here, we can always unlock the model from the lock icon and then we can uh, select the model from the image and uh, move it with the mouse uh, left button like this from any of the 2D slices or with the mouse right button we can rotate it. So this you can do as well from the 2D slices as well from the rendering. If you use the rendering, then you just mu must uh, also click Ctrl and Shift from the keyboard. And uh, well now, because of course my match was so good and now I misplaced it, so we can also uh, go here behind the properties of this dental model that we imported. So you can find this small screwdriver icon. And here behind it, we have a move tab.
tab. So in this move tab, you have also a possibility to reset to original position. So this resets it to the position that uh, was given by the fit model tool. So that way I get it back to its uh, place that was uh, that I had already checked that was good. Also, you see here these uh, rotation and translation uh, buttons. So these you may use if you want a very minimal uh, adjustments uh, to the intraoral scan position. Okay, after that, I uh, remember to lock the uh, intraoral scan again so that I don't move it by mistake. And then uh, we are ready to bring in also the restoration design. So that happens with the same fit model tool. We go back to the upper toolbar and uh, now we select then the crown design. And actually what you will see what will happen, uh, Romex is notice notices that this uh, crown design has been designed on top of the intraoral scan that we already imported. And what that means is that Romex knows where this crown belongs to. So uh, instead of needing to give any points, I can just select use existing match and you will see how the crown is dropped automatically to the right place. And uh, this way you can of course bring then also the upper jaw scan if wanted. And, uh, and as said, this works for any STL files. So whether they are intraoral scans or whether you have used a traditional impression and uh, digitized it. So you can import both of those uh, into the image in the same way.